at your instep is brought to you by Comic Town and BCW Supplies. Hello and welcome to <laughs> at your instep. We can only play seven seconds of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. If we pay any more than that, then like Fred Durst is gonna come with his lawyers, who I assume also wear their hats backwards and sue the pants off of us. And then I'll ask him, "Why do you want to hate me?" <laughs> and he goes, "Because I own the rights to the song." I own the rights to the song. <laughs> uh, well, we clearly are uh, uh, back in action. Uh, it's been a while since uh, we recorded. My name is Morgan, and I'm here with Mike, of course. Hello. And. Um, uh, yeah, it's 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 been some time since we recorded like any podcast. Mike and I went on vacation uh, with each other. It's it's not weird. We went with our wives as well. Uh, not that I, it'd I be weird either way. It, you could have phrased it as like Mike and I went with our wives on vacation, but you said that we specifically went on vacation. Also, they got to come. Yeah, that's what made it weird. Is how you ordered. I the mean, pairings. like you're probably right. I mean, but... we did spend a lot of time together in that's a lazy true. river. That's true. Like, now, granted, see, our wives are both there, but if I phrase it like that, mm-hmm. then it's just you and I in a lazy Yeah, river. there's a lot of speculation, a lot of drama <laughs> that, that we, we're causing here in the uh, Magic the Gathering podcast community. Also, if you haven't gone in a lazy river in a while, do, give yourself do, a little it's treat. It's summertime. Like, do, yourself, do yourself a good and just, just go. Just find one. I would say, like, don't just go into a river. <laughs> Definitely find one that's constructed in a circle. <laughs> Uh, because <laughs> you could get some rough rapids. It feels like if you went to just a random river, that's a really critical assessment of that river. <laughs> this one looks lazy enough. <laughs> You're like, get whoa, a man. job, river. <laughs> that, you don't know that river's story. <laughs> that river's been here longer than you, man. <laughs> why why don't you stuff. slow down and be no judgy about this river? <laughs> anyway. Uh, so uh, we are back from uh, from vacation and uh, ready to, to jump in and talk about some some magic. Little bit of, a little bit of uh, community stuff to talk about. Definitely some competitive stuff to talk about. Uh, M19 is definitely making making itself known within Standard. And even, even you know, to a lesser extent, some of the uh, legacy formats. And then, you know, we, we do have the bannings to talk about. At, at, you know, take a look at the, the format, how, it's, how legacy has sort of shifted due to those bannings. Uh, before we jump into all of that, I do want to make sure that uh, um, something that we really want to uh, highlight and... Um, talk about on the top of the show as well as at the end is our patreon um it's something that we haven't necessarily drawn a lot of focus to but we definitely wanted to shift that around so if you want to check out our patreon it's patreon.com slash at your end step and um, we have obviously uh a lot of lovely donors that help us uh get the show uh up and running each and every week and we just uh, want to do more with it, basically. So we want to invest some more time with it, so it's worth your time to invest in. And um, so that's that's kind of our uh, our commitment after coming back from our, our vacation, and um, you know, really trying to make it worth your while. So keep your eyes on that. We definitely have some stuff in the works, and even some stuff we're going to talk about today. Uh, but we'll save that for the end of the show. Uh, so let's jump into our community segments. So uh, we are in the midst of Commander uh, twenty. I think it's technically 2018, um, spoilers, and um, we have some pretty cool cards to talk about. I, I, I Normally, we don't necessarily talk about commander cards unless they are going to be like battle box cards or cube cards. <laughs> I, I don't think we've necessarily gotten many of those. We have gotten some type 4 cards, <laughs> which if you have a type 4 stack, uh, it, it, there is, it, it's always nice anytime any set comes out because you... You at least get to hopefully add some new counter spells, uh, but there are some cer- most certainly some fun cards to add to You're add that from person here. Gets really excited by like the apex of fate. <laughs> yeah, 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 like I don't know who this card is for, and then there's there's that type four person who's like, it's for me. It's for me. <laughs> uh, but I know that I, I at least would like to talk about some of the some of the story cards. Um, maybe the, the couple of planeswalkers that we have officially. I'm not going to talk about any of the unofficial ones that we that, that were spoiled, unfortunately. Uh, but we'll only talk about official spoilers um, from from here on out. Um, I, I think the first card that I would like to talk about uh, personally, uh, just because like it's a cool it, it's a cool thing to finally see, is Lord Windgrace. Um, yeah, this there he is, is. His lordliness is his, his lordliness. His his pantheriness. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan. Uh, if you don't know, Lord Windgrace is uh, like a, he's a he's a cat man. He's a, a leaning, uh, for for lack of a better term, I guess. Uh, <sighs> no, he's not. The Panther Warriors are different than regular. They're, they're very different like, than like, so Panther like, Warriors. Okay. So like, the, and I, I don't I don't know I don't because it's my head. If is Mira- uh, Miri uh, part of that that same sort of? So I think she is the same. 
type of like humanoid. Sure. But the one like the Lord Windgrace like Panther like Panther people are sort of like very specifically like tied to Urborg. Yeah. I'd have to look up like Miri to see if she is also of that same yeah. thing. But I Leonin is not right. Because... Leonin Leonin is specifically for like uh Mirrodin and as far as I know. Uh I don't know if they show up anywhere else. I, I I, I, off the top of my head, I could not tell you, but like uh, the if you uh, the the Windgrace acolyte was a common and dominant, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was a panther, panther riding a pterodactyl of some kind, yeah, um, the that, pterodon, that, yeah, that that is those are the the panther warriors that Windgrace sort of like was the head of, and they are still the remnants at Urborg, well before Urborg was like just straight evil. Yeah, this is like uh, Urborg hasn't always been like the tomb of Yogmoth. Uh, there was a, there was a time before you know Yogmoth. Uh, fell or died there, uh, that it was, you know, it was still a source of, like, uh, black mana, uh, but there are, were obviously other elements to that uh, section of Dominaria. Um, but we have the, the, the Lord himself, uh, Mr. Windgrace. Uh, he is a legendary planeswalker, Windgrace, um, <laughs> which is, uh, does he have a first name? Is is it just is Wim Grace's just first name? Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that jokes on you. He, it's not a title. No, His name is Lord. He is Lord. Like the singer. Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> um uh he is uh five CMC, he's two uh black, red, green, uh two generic black, red, green for a uh five starting loyalty planeswalker. Uh his plus two is discard a card, then draw a card, and if a land card was discarded this way, draw an additional card. And then his minus three is return up to two target land cards from the graveyard to the battlefield. And minus 11, destroy up to six target non-land permanents, then create six 2-2 two, two green cat warrior creature tokens with forest walk. Now, this is exciting because this is a long time since we've seen forest yeah, walk. Yeah, like I, I would really surprised to see a new card actually reference that. Now, that if ability. you you may not even know what forest walk is. Forest walk <laughs> means that if... You walk on the trees. <laughs> yeah, correct. Um, it means that if it, this creature attacks and the, the opponent you're attacking controls a forest so that could be a basic forest or a a dual land that has a forest uh subtype uh those creatures can't be blocked um and this is i can't even remember the last time they actually had uh a, a walk i know they had it in in Estrad, i believe i believe in a block the first time there was something that had a walk that swamp walk probably because swamp walk's really the only one that we'd seen swamp walk on like island walk other ones yeah. were not as calm. Forest Walks was still in existence, but, like... I, I think that's the last time. I know that something that um, I mean, I, New had, Phyrexia had walks right. as we, well. I mean, we also had, like... To be fair, we've seen it pretty recently. I mean, we had Planes Walk pretty much every set. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it's cool just, like, to have this card storyline-wise and, like, have him be personified in a, in a card, finally. Um, and, uh, like... If you're if you're like me and you're kind of just like a, a low key fan of like a cats on Magic cards, like you this this is you're, it speaks to you. This is also uh, th- this is Magic's version of like the Black Panther. Yeah, correct. <laughs> like, it kinda... It's very literal, <laughs> very very literal. Um, and well, what do you want to? Th- which card do you want to talk about? Uh, I want to talk about kind of two cards, I guess. But I want, so uh, these are the sets that I enjoy because same thing with like World Wind Grace, you get to see uh, some legends. Uh, so I want to quickly at least mention uh, Thanos, Urza's Apprentice, and Zancha, Sleeper Agent. So Thanos, was at, when it says Urza's Apprentice, we're talking Brothers War, Urza's Apprentice. Uh, we're talking, if you're wondering where Thanos would ref- reference, like Candelabra of Thanos. Thanos yeah. So pretty skilled artificer, and I think it's cr- pretty crazy to see him get um, like a card. I also think it's pretty great if you think of like how Candelabra of Thanos works, how his ability works with... like. <laughs> I, I, I think that there was. I think Gavin Verhey, who was one of the the uh, designers for the set, said that they wanted this card to work with all of the artifacts that reference Thanos. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So uh, I think that's pretty pretty great. Um, and then Zancha. Uh, so th- again, we're going really deep story wise. So uh, Phyrexian had sleeper agents. It's kind of a big deal. They technically we saw sleeper agents from the Cabal in the current Dominaria storyline. There was a whole section at um, the. Um, Oh, I'm going to forget the name of the school. Uh, Teleria. Thank you. The Telerian Academy. Teleria West, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where they had to find a sleeper agent. This is a thing the Frexians did. They would send Frexians into other planes. Um, famously, things like uh, Sarah's Realm, which then, you know, 
bad, corrupted, and kind of had to, had to be destroyed. Zancha though, actually, like, switches sides and helps Urza. Uh, when Urza tries to take, like, the nine titans and a bunch of planeswalkers, including Wind Grace, and just attack Phyrexia. Uh, so this is a pretty sweet, and if you if you have ever seen, there's a card from Urza Saga called Sleeper Agent, which has a similar mechanic, where it comes into play and then it's given to your opponent. So uh, I think, you know, I, I will say what she does, I guess, is a, a generic black and a red for a 5-5 five, five legendary creature minion. When it enters the battlefield, an opponent of your choice gains control of it. Zancha attacks each combat if able and can't attack its owner or planeswalkers its owner control. So you give a 5-5 five, five to somebody, and you're like, can't attack me, don't care which <laughs> one you do. And then it has an ability, three generic, uh, Zancha's controller loses to life, and you draw a card. Any player may activate this ability. So... Whoever you gave that card to, so this is kind of like the monger cycle where everyone can pay the ability. Um, so you, if you pay the mana, but another person controls the card, they lose two life, you draw a card. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a pretty, like, this is awful. Whoever you give this to, you just done a very bad thing to. But I guess they got a 5-5 five, five out of it. But yeah. yeah. I, I, like, the flavor of a sleeper agent is great, and uh, I, I'm pretty excited about that card. So I think those two legends really have me pretty excited. Um can I mention one more card? Yeah. The, uh, the other card I wanted to mention is, and again, there's been some cool things. I'm not really, I, I don't play a lot of EDH. I have gotten into Brawl, so there's that, <laughs> yeah. but I can't use these here. Though they did say that these were designed to sort of support things that we're seeing in Standard currently, which is cool. You can see that. Um, especially like Wind Grace and some of the cards we've seen there. You know, there's Crucible and things like that in Standard that sort of support this. Yeah. Um, but we got a new Vidalcan. Okay. Uh, this is a Vidalcan Humiliator. This is a three generic and a blue for a three, four Vidalcan Wizard. As Metalcraft, which is an ability we have not seen since uh, Scars of Mirrodin, which means you have to control three, uh, three artifacts for it to activate. Whenever it attacks, if you control three more artifacts, creatures you, your opponents control lose all abilities and have base power and toughness 1-1 one, one until end of turn. So, a couple of cool things about this card. One, this is a Mirrodin card, not yes. a new Phyrexia card, which is cool. So this is a, a different look at it. Is <laughs> the, the, the Humiliator... <laughs> turns all your opponent's creatures into one ones and then it's flavor text says and who will stop me you <laughs> no you're a one one now everything about this card just makes me very happy the, it's flavorful the, yeah. the title is great like i love it yeah obviously a, you know a call back to uh humility uh, if you, you're yes, not familiar like, with that card humility is like it, it is it's a perfect callback to humility but humility was about modesty humbling yourself this guy's getting humiliated <laughs> yeah no he uh, definitely so wants, he's definitely the bully in uh, oh, yeah, and no, Mirrodin. Oh, yeah, can bully. Very true, very true. So, uh, but, yeah, I think that's those are the ones I really want to highlight. We, we did get one other Planeswalker, right? We got... Sahili. So, Sahili Rai is getting a, a new card. Sahili the Gifted. And it is two generic uh, blue-red for a uh, four uh, loyalty starting Planeswalker. Uh, she has a plus one, which is create a 1-1 one, one Servo, a colorless Servo artifact. Uh, my uh, plus one, so two plus ones. Uh, the next spell you cast this turn costs one less to cast for each artifact you control as you cast it. Yeah, the, they had to really work toward that ability correctly because you could you would do this and then you could do so many things in your turn before you cast your spell. They couldn't make it part of this ability. It has to check when you cast it. So it's a little yeah. they had to word, word that really funky. And then minus seven for each artifact you control, create a token that's a copy of it. Those tokens gain haste and exile those tokens at the beginning of the next end step. And, of course, this can be your commander. Uh, but it's, it's cool for them to uh, not feel like they need to create a new sort of Planeswalker to have, you know, this artifact deck and artifact theme work. And they, they already have one. They already have Sahili. Right. And even though she, you know, has been a recent sort of Planeswalker to, to see... Uh, she could still be used in in this capacity with a, a you know a pretty cool you know powerful new card. Yeah, I, I think I think for them too. Like, so we had Sahili, and then we have um, I'm gonna forget her name already. The Planeswalker from Ixalan. Oh, great audio. Uh, I, I can't remember her name all of a sudden. Yeah, that's weird. That's sad. Anyways, though, um, but like we already had no story wise. That's where she went. She left Ixalan and went here and met Sahili Rai. Uh, so I think that it's pretty cool that, you know, we probably won't see them again for a little bit now that Ravnica, that storyline is taking such a huge, um, you know, focus, but I think this is a really cool way to make you remember like, Hey, by the way, like Sahili's still there. Huatli. Thank you. I do not know why that just name just popped out of my head. So I would have called her radiant poet too. And that's not even right. <laughs> She's a radiant champion and a warrior poet. Yeah, correct. So, um, uh, not to really get like too in depth, but like. Uh, Varchild, 
Betrayer of uh, Geldor, which is a uh, another card that's referenced in a lot of card names or, or flavor text, uh, is now going to be getting a card. Yeah. Um, uh, the only other card that I really wanted to to talk about that is officially spoiled at this point in time is Treasure Nabber, uh, because this is uh, a, a pretty nifty a pretty nifty goblin. Uh, so two generic and a red for a three two. It says whenever an opponent taps an artifact for mana. Gain control of that artifact uh, until the end of your next turn. Um, and if you look at the art, there are actually multiple different artifacts that are mana artifacts <laughs> that the never the never is sold. Most prominent of which is, of course, Soul Ring. Soul Ring, yeah, it's really good. It's like a mana silix, and <laughs> yeah, there, there's a oh mana silix gosh. and uh, like just a bunch of other like baubles. That's and cool. um, also, um, fun fact gives these backsies uh, a a real thing that you can say exists in magic now, correct because the flavor text on a, uh, a universal law if there ever was one <laughs> um but uh multi-universal but law. you know what you got me there got him uh but yeah I, i'm pretty excited to see like what else uh you know comes out of this i think uh where we like to look at commander or are for some of the uncommons for uh dave's cube uh, because we've gotten some pretty busted stuff from the <laughs> uh, commander in common slot. Um, so far, the ones that we've seen are all lieutenants, and lieutenant is a new mechanic that basically says if you control at the beginning of your. Uh, I, I don't know if they're all combat stuff, but at the beginning of a step, if you control your commander, do something. Um, I believe they all are is, combat. Is it turn. all combat? Okay. Combat on your turn. Uh, so. That or they the other like the only other thing is like geode golem, but that only really cares about your commander. So yeah, we we haven't really gotten too much of it. Now, like I said, there are we do have some pretty blurry images of uh, some of the other planeswalkers. We won't talk about them until we actually have them spoiled. Right, and that so. that'll be next week. But there is definitely one of them that I think is worth talking about for um, legacy implication. Interesting. Just because I I I've read some stuff. Uh, saw right. some saw some stuff saw okay, some talk i'm no legacy expert but if people are talking uh, about it then i'm gonna talk about it one of them it. that hasn't been spoiled there is a high-res image of that of the art for it it's terrifying oh yeah it's yeah <laughs> so, uh, so i guess those are a teaser we'll, we'll leave you with the little tease. yeah 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 uh so next up we have some brawl changes so uh mike and i both kind of uh mike definitely more than me are in it's into the brawl scene i'm, I'm on i'm on deck five yeah so uh, I, I mean, if we really wanted, kind of if we really want to talk about the 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 brawl fanatic, that would be our our, our friend Keller, who has seven or eight, seven or eight, yeah, uh, uh, decks at this point in time. But they're they're making some changes. So uh, we're, we're trying to make enough so that when we have the next uh, cube invitational, we're just going to supplant it with a, with a, pick a brawl deck. <laughs> It'll be the the the, the brawl expo. <laughs> the bra brawl expo. I like that. Uh, so we we uh, have some changes. So we're, we are changing the starting life total for one v one. So the 1v1 starting life total is going back to 25. Um, and this is sort of a response to some of the, uh, ma mainly really the, the uh, Kari Zev sort of mono red deck. Yeah, very much so. And um, having built and played that deck and played it today before we started casting, yeah, 25 is about where you need to start because uh, that, that deck is... Is is pretty brutal. It, it's it's just consistent. It's very consistent. Yeah, it just and you have a great two drop for an aggressive deck right. every time. So and you're just doing the same thing over and over again. So like, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I've I've played a fair amount of brawl on Magic Online now too, and uh, I, I I totally agree. So thirty is probably still too much. Um, twenty five though feels good. Yeah, I'm actually a bigger fan of the next one though. And you get a free mulligan. Uh, so uh, this is something that you don't commonly see in a constructed, you know, sort of format. Two at a giant has it. Two at a giant has it, uh, because but that's like even because of the rules technically. Because it, it's because it's not just because of the rules. It's because you play one game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which that that's the big deal. So the, the because you're only playing one game. But again, playing this on Magic Online, where if you just like mold a five, you just snap lose, and that's the match. Yeah, this is nice. Sure. And I, I think these are both fair changes, and I'm glad to see them continue to monitor it, monitor it and experiment with it to make sure that it, it does continue to work and people continue to be interested in it. So um, you said that you've been playing on Magic Online. Are you pretty consistently, like, finding a, a match? Uh, it depends on the time of day, honestly. Uh, the leagues on there don't have a ton of people currently. And I've also noticed that, like, MTG Goldfish isn't updating deck lists anymore. So, uh, now, they... now, here's the thing. I'm playing a Magic Online. I, I don't know if, like, there's been more arena migration or whatever. But um, it, it, it's kind of... It, I, I can play consistently, 
not late at night like I could with like a regular league or a draft. Gotcha. So, or if it is, it's it's me and one or two other people just sort of like <laughs> waiting in the queue for a while, then playing each other again. Yeah. again. So, and that's not exactly you know no, it's not exciting, great. but you can build a lot of brawl decks for like less than ten ticks currently on Magic Online. So like the one, and that's that's why I've had it on there. Yeah. So fair enough. All right. So the the next thing that we, we want to talk about here is a, a a bit of a a bit of a frustrating situation to be perfectly honest. And it frustrating because n- not because of like what what happened to this store. Uh I, I find that what happened to the store when we talk about it is completely justified. Uh but that it actually existed. That this is a thing that people were subjected to uh in, in my opinion. Um but a a store by the name of a store of fire and dice um was recently uh, revoked of their WPN status, uh, and if you if you don't know what this is, this is something that allows people to have like sanctioned magic within their stores. So run F and M's, run PPTQs, what have you. Any any sort of sanctioned magic, you have to be WPN uh, certified, um, and with that become you know comes with. Uh, the, the the ability for wizards themselves to revoke that status if you don't meet qualifications for you know running those events right or you just do like stupid things yeah correct uh, like like this store um, so recently there were new posters that were sent out to all WPN locations that kind of had uh, just some general sort of guidelines uh, to you know really hammer home. Uh, Watsi's want for uh, inclusiveness and just good, you know, in general, like good sportsmanship and things like that to their stores. And like, th- you could find this poster online, um, and it has like a, a lot of good, like just general good things that you would want in y- theoretically you would want in your store <laughs> location. Uh, and honestly, it it also helps like it it supports the, the updates they had to you know the the, the player yeah. you know, conduct policy and uh, obviously the fallout from the the MTG headquarters. Right. Garbage. Yes. So, uh, but what this store did is decided to take a sharpie to it, and uh, you know really cross out the things that they didn't like and and modify the things that they didn't like into basically a bunch of bad, we, just we, bad, yeah, just yeah, a bunch we, of bad. I mean, it just it's just dumb. It's just a dumb thing to do. Like like if you are, if you have a a. You know, a partner, a, a corporate partner, or a business entity that you work with, and they send you like material to put out because, like, hey, you're, you you want to do this? If the, your first instinct is to, no, nah, I don't, I disagree with this. Let's vandalize it and then take a picture of it and put it on the internet, and then get upset when that corporation doesn't want to be your business partner <laughs> anymore. You do not understand anything, anything. It is, ah, uh, uh, I. I wanted to again. I don't want to get into specifics of what that said. There, there are some other things about that store that popped up, including pictures of the uh, the so-called you know Kek or Kekstani flag, which is um, sort of been taken as a symbol of uh, the you know, sort of the the white nationalist alt right movement. Now, here's the thing, and I and I put this in here, so Morgan, you don't have to you know get angry with me if you don't want to. Like, I get on this topic because it's annoying, and I get it. Well, that's fine. Uh, but. I went down the rabbit hole reading some uh, some of the stuff and just like getting and I have to say like where where my quote unquote expertise lies as in like my like actual like college like education lies your field yeah it deals with sort of like looking and examining language like this and, and I think it's important for these people who and if you're one of these people I you know I'm I'm going to be highly critical here and you can jump on the internet and talk about how you know. I am an SJW, and Morgan's an SJW, and we're some SJW podcast. Like, it's some sort of dirty word to be progressive and wanting people to have, you know, be treated inclusively. And whatever. Do whatever you feel you need to do. But if you are going to go out of your way to defend a store, suggest incorrectly that their First Amendment rights have been infringed in some way. They haven't. No one, they, the picture's allowed to be posted. They can do what they want. They just lose out on the, the business partnership. Okay? That's how this works. Just like if you are deciding that you don't want to be a patron of wizards anymore because they did this, you're not infringing on their first amendment rights. You know what I mean? Like it, this is how this works. The cycle works. So you have to look at that equally. Secondly, if you're going to get on there and suggest that this imagery, you know, the, the Keck flag or Pepe or any of these things that are 4chan, uh, you know, sort of like, you know, 
progenitors, and you're going to come out and try to suggest that it's it's a meme and it's just like some nihilist form of expression, and it's actually about not having nationalism. Like, ha ha ha. This is... Here's the thing: language is very very powerful. And individuals quickly lose control of it. That's how the internet works. Memes, I love a good spicy meme. Don't get me wrong. But memes lose, like they derail quickly if you don't pay attention. You know, they, they, the lead gets buried. Language works very specifically. You know, we, we talk about idioms a lot. Idioms are, you know, it's raining cats and dogs. Or even something like saying things are cool, right? Like, those are idioms. Like, we use them to describe things, and it's in language that works for us, but we've lost the original meaning of it. Yo, people, yo, that's why things are the cat's pajamas. Cats don't wear pajamas, man. I don't know what to tell you. you yeah, go, just a go. word of warning. Don't try to put a cat <laughs> in pajamas. Like, they do not like it. You got to time travel back to the 20s and figure out why they did that. You know what uh, I mean? Also, not to derail things, but that definitely reminds me of the key and peel lighting <laughs> in a bottle. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, yeah. But, but in all, in all, and I, I know you did that recently. The, 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 the key and peel hole. The key and peel but, hole in but, YouTube. And, like, if you, you're trying to argue that, like, this is not how, well, that's not what that image is supposed to represent. It doesn't associate with Nazis. It doesn't do that. You know what? Maybe you believe that. And maybe when it first existed on 4chan or whatever else, that's how it worked. But it's been co-opted by these people. Just like the Pepe the Frog, the little image. The guy who created that cartoon has disavowed it because he watched it get hijacked. Right? If you are suggesting you do not align yourself with Nazis and the alt-right, which is, uh, don't align yourself with Nazis. It's weird. You shouldn't do that. Yeah, don't. Bad. But you're fighting a losing battle, and you look like an idiot because it's been taken. It's been co-opted. You're not going to take it back. It's the internet. It, you know, it, it's just how this works. So please, for the love of everything, stop defending those things. Recognize that imagery changes and the meaning of words change very quickly. And if you don't stay up with it, you, you, again, if you're a fan of meme culture, you know this. Because memes die every day, right? Like... Pay attention to it, because otherwise you sound like a person who's defending intolerance, defending ignorance, for what? For the sake of your own happiness? And nothing should tell you that you're in the wrong place more than the fact that the biggest supporter of this store and what's going on, two groups. Or, well, one person and one group. One, the Proud Boys, which if you don't know who they are, I don't suggest looking it up. But the owner of that store invoked them on Twitter and then deleted that tweet. And Jeremy Hambly, MTG headquarters himself, the guy who has a lifetime ban from WotC. If that's where you want to align yourself, fine. Quit the game, see ya. Yep. Okay? But at some point, you have to recognize that you, if you are standing with a bunch of people on the internet saying, no, that's not what it is, and then I can show you pictures of that flag in the Charlottesville attack where a person, like, where a person was killed by Nazis, guess what? You're wrong. And... This may not do anything. Again, maybe you've already shut down the podcast. Hey, I'm sorry, that's, Morgan. Deleted us. Unsubscribed. Good, get out. Good, good riddance. Be I'll be perfectly honest. Good riddance. But, like, seriously, at, at the end of the day, you may you may be a person who's played in that store, had good experience with people at that store, and this still happened. Okay? And that sucks. Right? It may have been one employee that did this. And that sucks. You can look at stories of this all the time. I, I showed Morgan a story of there's a, a bar in Athens, Ohio. Uh, Ohio it, it, which is where Ohio University is, right? So there's, there's a lot of a lot of bars there. A local, or a, a fairly prominent but statewide brewery saw that they, they had posted a picture that had a statement on a sign of theirs that said something that was not good. It was not good. That brewery Set, then now severed their relationship with that bar and same thing like it, you you can think that like oh but they can say what they want they can but everything has consequences yeah and, and at some point you've got to get away from this concept of like oh it's it's all about safe space it's not it's not about safe spaces it's about just not being a jerk to people you know what i mean like yeah we're, we're approaching a time and age where people aren't afraid to call you out on your language on what right. you're saying like maybe in in in, in, in past generations and past decades that has yet been less common but that is clearly not the case anymore yeah. so people are not infringing on your your first amendment rights to say things you are just being punished for it right. more actively than maybe <laughs> things have been previously and I, I don't feel bad for it if you are a bad actor if you're acting in bad faith and trying to use the first amendment right to defend your bad takes <laughs> your bad opinions and you're getting punished for it good then because that is society yeah. that's how it is supposed to work you are allowed to say these things and we are allowed to call you a bad person for having <laughs> those things we will still let you say them but don't expect a welcome audience don't expect a 
again, we're not required a to a company then to want to right. allow you to put their branding on things. Like that's that's the thing I doesn't understand. Like again, if for some reason the concept of what the things are on that that sign, you know, the concept of you know being kind to people, being inclusive, upsets you, and it makes you say things like, I uh, like. Like oh, safe space or safe space or or snowflake or things like that. You really should check yourself first because that reaction is not it's not good. It's not and, and it, like and like it, it's hypocritical. It's obscenely hypocritical. So uh, I I won't sit here and like condescend anymore because I was definitely doing that. But I I think that like if you are one of these people that's you know defending this store, you know maybe you think they should have gotten a warning or maybe they should have gone some other way. That's fine. You don't get to decide that. Nope. Okay, that, that's just how it is. They, you know, that that company gets to decide how those things are done, right? So, just examine where you are and examine what you're actually supporting. And if you are literally that person who has to try and find the way to explain, well, it's actually not this because of this and this and this, you shouldn't have to try that hard to explain to people that you don't hate things. The the more hoops you have to jump through, <laughs> that should be your first warning. <laughs> In all honesty. If it, if it is not a simple explanation and a complicated explanation for the reason why it's not hate, no, no, you're, it's just not, you reevaluate, take, take a step back, look at the big picture. Also spicy take, if the thing that you're about to get on and defend comes from the bowels of a place like 4chan, mm, no, first of all, no, <laughs> like... that is not a, that is not a stable base to build your argument. I will tell you that. Uh, Yeah. It's it's bad, but you you make a good point, and I think like the internet has accelerated the idea that language and images and their meanings change so rapidly. And if you're not going to invest time to realize what is happening, then you maybe shouldn't interact with it. And I think you have some personal like not just think you do like we all have personal responsibility in the things we say. Yes, there, there's a whole secondary argument you can get into. I know that this this technically overlaps with like the James Gunn you know material, which you could then argue then. Does someone have room to change and grow? I, I I don't know what the line for that is. I I know that no corporate entity has to give you that time. No. So that, that not at that's all. that is the important thing here. So I I think that you even had we had a, a, a writer for Star City had that happen you know recently who they tweeted out something really insensitive. Uh, that was Ben Friedman who did yep. that, and uh, he said afterwards he didn't know the word that he had tweeted out was like insensitive. Well, people defended him on that, but here's the thing, like. If you are going to use a word that you do not know what it means and just throw it out into the ether, like, yeah, you you can use ignorance as an excuse, but don't expect anyone to like. Yeah, but no one has to give you quarter for it, right? Like, that's exactly. The thing. Like, no one has to give you understanding for it. And I think nope. I think that's maybe just the things that people don't understand. Like, yo, know, I'm not I'm not a, you know I'm not Jordan Kennedy, former host here, who's going to be a lawyer. I I cannot, but I can I can tell you that like language is is tricky, and I can tell you that. Language changes meaning so quickly that you are responsible for your usage of it and your understanding of it. Symbols, images, they change their meaning quickly. And you can't, you as an individual can rage, rage into the night about how something is wrong and how that's not okay. But again, I'll go back to the, the guy who created the Peppy cartoon. Like he could have, he could have fought back and said, no, I'm going to keep doing this because that's not what it is. Though he saw the writing on the wall. Yeah. You know, you can't. You can try to control the message, but you're just going to end up getting lumped in with a bunch of people that I that you probably don't fully agree with, or yeah. I hope you don't. Once once the lightning's out of the bottle, you can't you can't put it back in. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so that that's me ranting. I, I just yeah, uh, come on. Yeah, come on. I <laughs> I agree. <laughs> just like be cool. All right. Well, that's going to be everything for our community segment. Um, uh, before we head into competitive, we do want to give a shout out to Comic Town. Uh, they're going to be having their uh, M19 sealed PPTQ uh, with a 1K uh, in store, uh, in store, it, 1K prize pool for store credit. That is the, uh, um, it's going to be on August 4th. So Saturday, August 4th, which uh, does overlap with, with Gen Con for, for some people. So uh, definitely, you know, keep that in mind um, when, when going to attend. But uh, it's definitely worth your time to to go and crack open some M19 packs and try to try to queue for that RPTQ. Uh, players meeting is going to be at 11 a.m. and it only costs a cool $30 to enter. So uh, definitely take a look at that. Put that on your calendar if you are uh, in the Midwest area to battle some M19 uh, at a PPTQ. So, 
uh, competitive. Uh, GPs, uh, it looks like a lot of them are going to be limited, so we're going to be talking about them very limitedly. Um, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> the, the first one is GP uh, Chiba. Uh, it was won by uh, Guillaume uh, Salvador. Now, I know uh, that this is important because this is the first uh, uh, person of uh, Latin descent, I believe, or Spanish descent. Um, I don't know if he's actually from Spain or from uh, uh, South America that has won a GP in uh, Japan. Oh, wow. Uh, so this is, is an historic moment. Nice. Um, so congratulations uh, to him. Uh, there was also a unlimited draft. Now, they've been doing this at other GPs right. where they have similar – it's not a beta draft, but you can still open some – Unlimited's some, pretty good, though. Yeah, yeah. You can still open some pretty uh, awesome things, obviously. Uh, but they're doing the whole qualifier thing for people to queue into the actual draft. They haven't been televising them or, or streaming them. As far as I know, but there's been coverage around them. So this one was was pretty exciting. Uh, you you might say because it oh, there was a black a black lotus, black lotus, a black lotus, <laughs> a black lotus that was opened, <laughs> uh, which was I mean if you're going to open something from an unlimited pack, that's the thing. <laughs> so they didn't have again they don't have the streaming of the event, but there is video of that being opened. Yeah, it's very exciting, and it is it is like the people react like like GIF in real life where you just yeah. like sticker scroll across and everyone just. Ah! <laughs> Like, it's wonderful. It is. Um, so if you haven't found that moment. yet, de definitely moment. seek it out. It, it's worth your time. Um, some uh, other hits include Ancestral Recall, Time Twister, Mox Ruby, Chaos Orb, Tundra, and Savannah. So that was that's pretty pricey. Yeah, it's a, it's a good... Got some pieces of power in there. And the, the best piece of power, of course. Um, so next up, we had GP Sacramento. Uh, and that was also limited. And um, it was won by Richard Liu. So uh, congratulations to Richard Liu. Um, uh, truthfully, I haven't watched a whole lot of M19 Limited, to, to be perfectly honest. It, but it does seem like Corset Plus Limited. Yeah. I, I would probably give it that. Like, it's still Corset. It's not going to be super exciting, but... It's it's bomb heavy. Uh, especially, yeah. like, we the a couple of things I did watch, like Dragons, for, just do, do crazy work in this format. Mm -hmm. the, the removals average, and uh, they're, they're, you know, it's, it's again, it's a Corset. So, like, you're... you're all of your responses are vanilla, but all of your rares and mythics are, are disgusting. <laughs> so um, definitely a huge shift in feeling from like Dominaria where you, one of the things we said that was great about that set was that you had your removal spells could deal with most of the, the rares and mythics in some fashion. This is not consistently true, I think, for um, for the core set. But yeah. it, again, you kind of know what you're getting into if you're, if you're going to do that set. All right, so let, let, let's uh, settle in with uh, what we're going to be talking about the most, which is going to be Star City Games Philadelphia. It was a team-constructed uh, tournament, and um, definitely want to give a, a shout-out here uh, to the winners. Uh, it was Daniel uh, Barkton, uh, Steve uh, Noga, and uh, Kellen Pastor uh, for, for winning the tournament, uh, defeating Christopher uh, Giuliano, uh, Matthew Voltz and Timothy Giuliano in in the finals. I, I believe how the breakdown is. Um, so let's let, let's take a look at the first place legacy list here. So it's it's lands. Um, uh, pulling it up here real quick. I'm not sure if there's anything you know too uh, too wild um, in in this uh, in this particular list. It looks fairly uh, yeah fairly standard. Um, from from what I can no, see, no, it's legacy. I I get it. You made a joke. I'm very proud. <laughs> I'm very I'm very proud of your joke. Um, yeah, it looks it looks fairly um, stock uh, to a, a a casual uh, legacy observer. Um, but really, what I wanted to ask is, I do think that that lands definitely had room to gain with the the bannings, uh, mainly not having to worry about Deathrite Shaman. Yeah, it definitely like. Cards like Life in the Loam and Punishing Fire improve drastically yeah. when you don't have something that is main deckable eating those cards or eating the targets for those cards. So, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. So let's move on to Steve Noga playing uh, the tree aggro. The, the, the trees. The trees that come to get you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, mono green aggro. This this is a you know this has a splash of black. We have that for the you know scrap heap scrounger activation and then uh, some hour of glories there in the sideboard. Um, but we're we're playing the the eight dual lands if I'm if I'm not mistaken yeah the eight yep. dual lands for the, for the splash so fairly fairly easy uh, most of the time they don't necessarily affect your your curve or anything like that and obviously all of them still allow you to cast your uh, your Steel Leaf champion on time 
Uh, but we, we do have some uh, updates from M19 that I think have really powered up this deck. Uh, the first one that I think is the, the biggest deal is Thorn Lieutenant. Um, you know, this is the... Wait, which card was the biggest deal? Uh, Thorn Lieutenant. Oh, that's weird. Because I, I remember defending Thorn Lieutenant pretty hard on the uh, the, the Palooza. And Probably. Getting shot down a little bit. Uh, it, it's definitely kind of uh, an unassuming card, but the more that you look at it, the more of a, a hole that obviously fills in this mono green deck. Yeah, you know, I'm it's, just it's, making a condescending walk of meme to you right now. Yeah, so I know. I get it. Tell me more. Uh, so, you know, it being a two mana two three is, is very important. Um, the, uh, the, the ability, um, of making a 1-1 if it gets targeted, um, by your opponent, it, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, it, it's just something that sticks around, which is perfectly fine. And then late game, it, it kind of just kill your opponent. <laughs> yeah. I, I think one of the, th the things with this deck is that this deck has a lot of mana sinks because you know, green, green decks generally like stompy decks. If you flood out, what can you do? But this deck having, um, Things like Ronus, which is a mana sink, Scrap Who Scrounger is a mana sink, um, even Hash of Oasis being something to do with your lands, and then Thorn Lieutenant. Like, even when you don't have many threats on the board, a lot of your cards do a lot of work. And I, I think that's pretty important. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but I think, like, uh, I guess when we did talk about it, I just wasn't thinking, like, there, there are uh, many decks in the format that if you just have that right to drop, then that just makes your deck work. Well, I mean, so like, what two drop is this replacing? I don't, I don't, I don't know. That was the 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 explorer merfolk. Oh yeah, this is so, this is exactly what you want. Yeah, so you know, it was just you know, that that is sort of where you're going with it. And again, it's just better. Yeah, and um, the the other edition which warms the the cockles of my heart is is Vine Mare, my spirit animal. Yeah, shut up, Vine Mare's. <laughs> I uh, I have you know that the brawl deck I've been playing on Magic Online is mono black. Yeah, can't uh, be Vinemare. Got to do I had Vinemare cast against me, and I was like, "But, huh? Got, got to right. Got to crack open that uh, that that saga about Nicobolus. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I just die. Thanks for packing in. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, most of the mono green aggro lists have been playing three to to four uh, main deck Vinemares, and um, it, it's very good. I even saw it in the black green constrictor uh, deck. Uh, and someone just got to put a bunch of plus one plus one counters on it from a Verdurous Gear Hulk, and I was like, "Yeah, sign me up." <laughs> where, where do I where do I go? Yeah, I, lo I love it whenever they print a playable hexproof creature. It certainly does. Hey, me too. Me too. <laughs> um, and then we we actually have uh, Vivian Reed here hanging out in the in the sideboard, and I, I think that card is exactly what I thought it was going to be uh, a a cool sideboard card. I, I, again, I, wait till rotation to see if it sees a little bit more. Yeah, I, I want to say something interesting about Vivian Reed. I guess I didn't catch this, but they um, I read they updated her Planeswalker profile. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the Vorthos cast was talking about this week too, but she's being set up as a villain. Interesting. Like, like she, um, she's the last of this like group of people, uh, this like race that they really commune with. Sp so her bow like communes with the spirits yes. of all the animals. And like, she's been going from plane to plane, like collecting different animals for her bow essentially. But she is like anti-civilization. Like she thinks that animals should just like, she seems like very gruel, but without like the whole Ravnica city part. And she's definitely being set up as like a villain. Like she's anti civilization and has uh, a like a weapon of mass destruction in her hands. So I thought that was kind of interesting because I I guess when anticipating the planeswalkers of the core set, you know, if Bolus was the villain, right? Then, but it makes sense that I guess you know Bolus has other villains that he is against as well. Like it isn't just all heroes that hate him. So yeah, okay, gotcha. So it's like a, a venom situation. <laughs> yep. Cool. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, Vivian's gonna get that symbiote. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, a sort of not not like a villain, but sometimes an, an antihero. Uh, maybe. I I don't even know if it's like heroic. I I think that's what's interesting. So, yeah. uh, I guess a, a, a lot of times Venom just beat up other people because he just wanted to kill Spider Man yeah, himself. But sometimes he was like a soldier, man. He worked for like the, the government. Yeah, but that was when it was like Flash Thompson, and Flash Thompson couldn't. It was like paralyzed from the waist down. Welcome to symbiote talk. <laughs> Welcome to symbiote talk. Uh, uh, I'm getting verklempt. I, I'm your host, Carnage Boy Seven Five Seven. It's my co-host, co Scream Guy. Scream Guy. <laughs> oh man. Anyway. Uh, that, I think it's interesting, um, to have, like, a, uh, a green villain, uh, yeah, I think even like, though, like, we, we kind of had Garrick, and, but he was only evil no, but, because but I think, like, the, he, I, got, he done got cursed. I like experimenting with, 
you know, other colors having villains. Because I think it's easy for red and black to have villains for the most part, but they've done a good job recently of making red seem heroic. Yeah. Uh, I think they've done a good job. We had Dove and Bond, for example, just being like, you know, white aligned and sort of evil. Mm -hmm. Blue is, I think, also easier to make it evil. We had um, uh, the Praetor, uh, Ginger Taxes, yeah. for example, uh, and the Vidalkin in, in the original Mirrodin cycle were presented as like, not not good people like right. not, not, so I, I think it's I think it's cool to play around with the color pie and be like you know Lord, Lord Windgrace is you know black aligned because of Urborg but you know he's a, he was good for the most part you know I, I think that that that's good to play around with that a little bit yeah for sure okay. sorry not to get onto lore talk in the middle of this but no no, no that's it, fine it's it completely fine um, and then for the modern slot uh, we had Kellen Pastor <laughs> what uh, miserable finals playing Mono Green Tron and this deck. Uh, you know, like clockwork, you know, we kind of see modern go through these these you know, rotations where we have humans be good for a long time. And then in response to that, we get control. And then in response to that, we get Tron and KCI, the, you know, these kind of uh, at least Tron goes over the top of control. I don't know. Like, I think KCI is pretty resilient yeah. versus control. Um, well, this was a Tron monogreen Tron mirror match in the modern. Yeah, portion, that's so. that's miserable. Um it, you know, with that, it's pretty much, did you go first? 100%. Did you get Tron first? 100%. Did you cast card first? <laughs> did you do all the things? Congratulations, you won. I, you definitely did that, like, the like the cha-cha slide? Did you, did you, <laughs> slide did you, did, to the left. Did you, did you, go, were you on the play? Did you play <laughs> Natural Tron? Did you play Natural Tron? Did you cast yourself a card? I, oh, God. Now crisscross. <laughs> Everybody. Come to your hands. <laughs> I... If you're in your car and you just started clapping your hands, thank you. Good, good job. Good job. Proud of you. You've been to a lot of weddings. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, the nothing. It's Tron. What do, What do you want from us? How much more can we really tr talk about Tron? I, I I like Tron. I I do think like it is is most certainly um, obnoxious. But I if you're not gonna let people have you know people want to play these these decks like. Oh and, no! Let, let them live. Like let them play the deck, but and it's fine to have it as a stopgap. It's just every time you see that, where it's just like, uh, I, I just get a weird shudder through my body whenever I see like turn one like tower. It's just like, oh, good. Yeah. So so good. Um, and and you know that's kind of the the, the top three decks here in the um. Let, let's uh let's peruse here. I want to go back up to Legacy for a little bit because I know we don't normally talk too much Legacy, but there are two decks I want to mention. First is, did you see what's in third place? Yeah, uh, Oliver Tomashko, Tomashko playing, playing Grixis Death Shadow. Yeah. Uh, this is, I'm no stranger to uh, to this because, what was it, Raptor? Raptor tried to play uh, this yeah. a while back. That was sometime last year, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I really like this idea. Um, you know, the nice thing about this deck, too, is it's not terrible. Like, if you are already in the Grixis Death Shadow deck in Modern, then you're really... He he played an underground, so you certainly wouldn't have to. And you're only a, a place that a force of wills essentially away from being able to play a serviceable version of this deck. I just love the cards it gets. Obviously, brainstorms wonderful, and ponder is wonderful to get. Um, it's also playing Delver of Secrets, so you know, rest in peace, Dave. Uh, and you get like snuff out, which if you never got to cast snuff out, snuff out is an instant that costs three generic and a black, destroy target non-black creature. But if you control a swamp and you pay four life, you can do that instead of paying its mana cost. Mm -hmm. If you never got to snuff out something, that's great. But in Death Shadow, you can it's even better. It, it makes your Death Shadow bigger, and you got to snuff out. So, uh, I definitely like. You know, I think this is a, a sweet take on this archetype. And I, again, cool to see something a little bit different come into uh, the, the format. It's it's so wild to see like. One underground C, nearly eight hundred dollars. Oh yeah, it's like the price of the deck. <laughs> yeah, that is like nearly half the cost of the deck. That is that is so wild. Um, uh, yeah, that's I, that's a different conversation. But, yeah. Uh, and then the other deck I want to mention is uh, Gerard Fabiano playing Chess Guy Stoneblade, um, and they were in what seventh place, um, only because Stoneblade was one of the decks that people said also could stand to make a resurgence uh, once Death the Right Shaman was gone. Uh, Stoneblade decks are historically are the, these are the um, Stoneforge Mystic st style of decks, and again they were pretty popular for a while in in Magic. I also saw they had a deck tech on Maverick uh, during yeah. the, uh, for, during the the open as well, which again is a deck that you just haven't seen in a while based on Stoneforge Mystic. So uh, I think it's pretty cool to see some of those decks come back into the fold and and show you that like if you look at this top eight. It's still pretty diverse. You have, you know, so we do, do have two copies of lands, but you have Infect, which is awesome. Death Shadow, Sneak and Show, Storm, 
uh, miracles, and then they have the ninth place. Uh, I don't know if he actually this actually is ninth place or was just like listed, but um, Grixis Delver is still yeah. there. So I, I think you know, Death Ranch Island has gone, and the format remains you know opens up. It looks like so that's cool. Uh, a, a format that definitely looks less open, just judging from this this top eight, <laughs> which you know take it for what it is. It's definitely standard. Um, I, I think it's just because standard is kind of getting long in the tooth. Um, it, it is the biggest standard will ever be for, for quite some time. And I, I think that when it, when you break it down, the Kaladish block cards are still very oppressive. And, um, you, I, now you say that, but honestly, if you, the Grixis decks, they're not, it's not Kaladesh. It's not Kaladesh making the Grixis decks good. It's what, Amoket? It's Amoket, and it's honestly, it's Nicol Bolas. Like, the Grixis control deck and then the two Grixis midrange decks are, are, are sporting between three to four copies of Nicol Bolas the Ravager, backed up by the Scarab God, uh, so, and then yeah. uh, removal, so. Y you still definitely see Kaladesh, though. You still see yeah, Siphoner, Siphoner, you see Virtuoso, you know, Gearhulk. Gearhulk. It's true. But, I mean, I, I don't think you can Harness just... Harness Lightning. I don't think you can just say specifically it's that anymore. Like, this is a full block, like a full standard effort. This is the largest it will be. Um, I think it's easy to... It's, or, it goes without saying that Nicol Bolas is definitely the new hotness, though. Uh, it's seeing a lot of play. Yeah, I mean, like that's the that is definitely the the good card uh, from from M nineteen, other than Vine Mare. Um, Shut up. <laughs> hey, Nicol Bolas can't block Vine Mare. I know. Okay, <laughs> I am aware that Vine Mare is now the best card in standard. It's right? so hilarious just to see like a Scarab God and then like some Scarab God and then all the things it reanimates. <laughs> you're just like, I just don't care anymore. They're all black zombies. <laughs> this is great. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we saw that card and we knew it was going to be dumb. Like, like the card's just a, a good rate for it on, on its own. And if you, if you flip, then I, I don't know what your opponent's doing. It, they better be contempting it if they haven't already contempted it for some reason. Yeah, but. no, it's, uh, the, the thing is like how good they are in multiples. You know, yes. It, it just, well, it's a four, four flyer. You already got it. You're already down a card. So you're two for one when you get rid of it. And then the next one comes out, and then, okay, you dealt with those. Here's the Scarab God, and it's going to bring one back. Cool. So, or they play Liliana, Death's Majesty, and bring one back. Oh, that's exactly. That right. is that is a gross interaction. But I think like these mid range decks, who their four drop consistently always nets them a card, like always gets a discard. It, over the course of a game, it, it, it really puts you ahead without having to do anything other than just cast your yeah. good four drop. It, it, yeah, it's such a uh, you know a minor investment. You're just progressing your board, and like you're getting so far ahead. Now we already know that like Grixis mana bases are are good right now. Grixis has been a deck back and forth for a while, yes. so it'll be interesting to see what happens with Nicol Bolas post rotation and what how good the mana. Like, obviously, Ra Ravnica suggests we should get good mana, yeah. but uh, you know we, we definitely lose the fast lands and we lose you know Aether Hub, which is a big deal. So I, I do wonder what how you know, like how good Nicol Bolas is when you don't immediately have yeah. a, a, a literally a, a mana base that's already been designed for you. Right, we lose you know. We'll we'll be losing. And, oh, and the cycling lands. Yeah, too. we'll lose. We'll be losing nine duels. Yeah. Uh, well, eight duels. Excuse me, right. and a, a five color land and essentially. Five color land, yeah. So I, I think it'll be you know plus all the deserts and things like that. But I think like, yeah. the I, fixing is great. Uh, right what now, what so. we need to do is see what guilds are in the first set. I, uh, we I, know, and I don't know. If I, yeah, head. I don't know. I know it's it's out there. So we'll have to review that and, and come back to this, what those mana bases are look are going to be looking like potentially. Right. If we get what we think is going to happen, but you know, Wizards has this way of like, yeah, disappointing us sometimes. So <laughs> I wouldn't put all about? I wouldn't put all your eggs in the Shockland basket. Um, no, your eggs will get shocked. That's true. Uh, and then we, uh, of course, had, should talk about Modern and sort of the top eight from here for Modern. So we have obviously Mono Green Tron uh, being first and in second place, um, followed up by uh, Jessica Control, uh, piloted by Jonathan uh, Rossum. Uh, who is, you know, pretty known for, for piloting the deck. Um, he is playing one Jace uh, in, the, in the deck, which breaks my heart because I don't have a Jace, the my Sculptor, uh, and I, uh, I might need one um, if I want to play just Control anytime soon. Um, but that's only the real, you know, kind of kind of big shift. Uh, I think the mana base is a little bit different. We only have two Celestial Colonnades. Uh, moving up to, I think, three Field of Ruins as opposed to two. Uh, but these are sort of, you know, tweaks for, for a particular metagame, especially with the uh, shift in Field of Ruin for Tron, you know, uh, or mana decks in general, uh, which I think in, is, is pretty important to, to ha have a plan. Um, and in, in the sideboard, we even, we even see this. Uh, did you see the, the split of a Baneslayer Angel in, in Lyra? 
so when you board them both in, they have a chance to work with each I, other. I, I'm not sure what that is 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 there for necessarily. It but could also just be like what he had available at that moment. potentially. So, um, but again, technically, yeah, I guess you wouldn't want by running one of both, then you never have an issue of having one in your hand and one in play. Like being a legend, you can always cast both. So maybe if you want to, you just want to play the two different ones. Yeah, maybe. So um, then we have Blue Red Gift Storm. Um, in fourth place, uh, and then Grixis the Shadow kind of showing up again a little bit more in fifth. Amulet Titan in sixth, Blue White Control in seventh, and then Grixis Control in eighth. Um, so uh, from what I heard, from like we can even look at like the the metagame breakdown, but uh, in Modern Control was was where apparently a lot of people wanted to be uh, across uh, in the in the modern format. We had. Eight blue white X control decks, so that's either blue white or Jeskai. And then, uh, you know, we have the one Grixis control, so that's nine, you know, control decks um, that you you could have potentially you've seen on day two. And you know, not very many things got, you know, more than you know two, uh, you know, showing up really. Uh, one important note is both mono green Tron decks. Top aided and yeah. got first and second, so pretty good conversion <laughs> conversion rates in, during day two to to both you know make top eight. Um, same thing with the the, the storm list that, that that we have. Um, only one KCI deck is showing up uh, as well, and and not even in the in in the top eight uh, did they finish. So and uh, another important you know titan of the format was humans that only had one convert. Uh, so it, it feels like people are team opens are still hard to judge. Of course, actual like, but it definitely means something that less people sleeved it up. Yeah. So I, I think that's a, that's hundred percent true. Um, and, and another deck in Legacy that we didn't talk about that stood to gain a lot is Death of Taxes because yeah, it didn't crack the top eight, but it, like has all the staples have moved a lot in the correct. last few days. Uh, and they got a new card in Brightling. Yeah, that card's sweet. I I agree. If I had a deck that I could play, it'd probably be Death of Taxes in, in Legacy, mainly because it's it easier for me to get into. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Brightling is the kind of card I want to cast. That's how I feel about it. Oh, yeah. I've been really patient. <laughs> Can we please talk about the Modern Classic now? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I've been waiting. Uh, so, should we talk deck. about second through eighth? Because I know you're going to talk a lot about the first place list. I can be patient. Okay. So, we have Black Red Hollow 1 in second. Boring. Just Jessica I control. Uh, the, 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 here we have humans cracking the top four uh, in, in fourth place. Uh, then Maru Pyromancer, Blue White Control, Monogreen Tron, and another Blue White Control list. So still pretty diverse, uh, seeing a lot of what we saw from the open. But uh, the real darling of, of the top eight here we have is uh, oh my gosh. Scred <laughs> Dragons. Uh, so I, I want... Piloted by Ozzy Kelly. Yeah, which sure. I, I want everyone, everyone out there listening to know that, yes... This deck won. And yes, I went out the next day and bought 21 Stoke color Colored Mountains <laughs> and four Sark in the Fire. Uh, uh, I just want you to understand, that is what I did. If, if you were thinking, I wonder if Mike is going to go, yes, I did, and yep. I'm invested. Yep. Um, this deck is is out there. It is similar to you know what we would see with a, a Scred deck. Instead of playing four Koth, though, we see four Sarkin uh, Fireblood. And, and Koth, I'm real sorry. Like, hashtag yeah. Kothwatch, I, I, I love you, bud. But I'm on that Sarkin train for a little bit. <laughs> on the Sarkin train for a little bit? And, and I, again, I know that I said I don't know where Sarkin could go. But I, I just, I never imagined casting Thunderbreak region off of it. And now I do, that's all I want to do with my life. Yeah. That, that uh. is a very powerful thing that you can you can do in this list. Playing four of them, as well as four Glorybringer and two Stormbreath Dragon. Um, and you know, you have a couple Chandra there, just like a, a regular Scred deck would. Um, but you know, a lot of your powerful things that you're doing are, are obviously Scred. Um, that's a, a very powerful, you know, um, removal spell that you're able to cast at instant speed and do, a, a, you know, kill things you shouldn't necessarily be able to kill with Scred, uh, with a one mana, you know, bolt esque effect. Um, and then you also get to play Draconic Roar, which is really cool because that, that card is just like better Searing Blaze if you're just playing a bunch of dragons. <laughs> Um, so I want you to know that I, I, this deck already has been built on Magic Online. Nice. And, um, casting Draconic War, it still feels real good. Yeah. See, I think... It this, felt great in the standard format it was legal in. The decks that I've done so well, like, I've done well with recently, like, and I say in the last few years in standard, 
This has so many pieces of all of them. It's like, yeah. Stormbreath Dragon? What's up, bud? I remember you. Thunderbreak Region, Dracronagor? Okay. Chandra? Like, what? All of them. They're all here. They're here for me. They're here for me. Is it? Is this just like the Super Smash Brothers like ultimate thing? Like, <laughs> they're all here. They're all here. <laughs> um, I, I'll be honest. Like I said, I played the deck a little bit. It, it, it's, it's been average for me. Yeah. I still really enjoy it, though. And I said, I'm, I'm going to finish building it. I, I am so impressed by this run. Like... This is, Ozzy, let me tell you, like, just heart to heart, thank you. Thank you for this. I, I hope you had a blast winning this tournament, and I hope you understand how you have now delighted, I'm going to say millions, you've just delighted millions. Uh, you know, uh, this is an, an awesome, really interesting take on Scred, and I, I don't know if this is going to necessarily be like the the, the version going forward. I don't know if people are still going to try it with, with Koth or what have you, uh, but... I, I'm interested to, to see if this really has, you know, uh, has wings. We'll say if it has wings. Nice. Uh, yeah, but... I, I think it really depends on how, where the format looks. Yeah. Um, this is a deck that's playing for Blood Moon, so in the main. So, like, it, it still has to get its hate somewhere, but you, you talk about a deck like Humans, for example. I, I played this matchup against, like, Humans now. I played the matchup against Affinity. You just have a lot of removal. And then yeah. You have a bunch of things they can't deal with. Yeah. And you get to points in the game where... They can no longer, like, especially with one Thunder Break, but sometimes you have, like, the double Thunder Break. They can't interact with your board anymore. They can't reflect and rage you, or they immediately lose. They can't block you effectively, They and it's it's pretty crazy. And Storm of Dragon, still really good in a lot of matchups. Uh, very hard to interact with for a lot of players, and uh, that monstrous happens real quick. Yeah. So. I, I, can, I can see that being, uh, being the exact case. Yeah, you can't, you gotta, you can't path it, which is still the best. It's just... I don't know. I, I really like what this deck is doing. I, I'm not kidding. I literally did go buy these things. I Morgan can attest to. I, I can. So um, I'm pretty excited about it. And uh, I, I'm always excited to see like wacky decks in Modern. Very rarely do I immediately subscribe to them. And I'm not suggesting this is the best deck in Modern. But it checks a lot of boxes for me as far as fun. So I'm going to have fun with it. Nice. Uh, I did want to shout out to the ninth place list of elves. It is playing four of the Elvish Clan Caller. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's it's showing up and, and making sort of a, an immediate impact on, on this particular uh, deck like we kind of thought it would. Um, you know, I, in the end, I do really like uh, elves as just being like this really cool sort of thing that you could just play in a lot of different formats. Not standard yet, but, you know, who knows? Um, and I don't think there's anything else really too, uh, uh, too important to shout out except for humans because Militia Bugler is, 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 is showing up in there now. It, it's been a varying between lists, whether you're seeing like a couple or if you're seeing the whole, whole set of, of them kind of uh, appear, but having played a little bit, uh, online with the, this card, it, it's it's pretty good. You you have uh, plenty of targets to to sort of nab with it, um, and if I mean it even gets itself obviously, and uh, it, you know it just cares about power. So your sideboard creatures that you're bringing in, your reclamation sages, your katakis, your gadak Oh, nice! Yeah, they can it can get those as well. So I already like the interaction with phantasmal image, for example. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. That definitely has power less than two, <laughs> <laughs> or two or less. It turns out uh, zero is uh, less than two. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, you know, it, it's kind of a, a non bow with Manus Rider. Uh, you, you do kind of feel bad when that happens. Um, but, uh, everything else feels, feel, pre feels pretty good. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, this deck, I, I definitely think, you know, you're, you're, you're even seeing some changes in the mana base. You do see that there's an island being played now over, like, a second Sea Chrome Coast. Um, and I, I you yeah, know, that frustrates me because I have a, a, an MPS, uh, planes, and I'm like, really? You're gonna, uh, you don't have to bend to the whims of every week. Play whatever you'd like. That's true. Or just get an island. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's obviously the the correct choice. Um, uh, in the end, I do feel like uh, modern is currently just kind of on its cycle. I, I feel like we're we're seeing like the traditional sort of thing. So the next week, you know, with with Tron being popular, you know, maybe we we see some combo strategies step up to 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 the forefront maybe not necessarily storm but some of the things that tron might have some some issues interacting with positively remember storm did top eight the open too, it did so. it did of course um uh but you know storm is getting uh has, has been getting some pretty uh substantial hate cards so yeah, that's true. uh if uh, i say like maybe not storm because 
if you are a you know Tron player, then you're going to expect that. So you, maybe your sideboard changes to help hedge against that. So maybe try to find another weakness that, that Tron has that you can kind of exploit and then go from there. Um, something that I, I do want to say and kind of something that I've noticed is that the 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 Jun deck is just nowhere. Um, yeah. You know, Modern Pyromancer is pretty much un you know dethroned that deck uh, as being like if you're going to play mid range, it's going to be Mardu, um, and there there really isn't any way around it. Yeah, the, the only even hint of like Goyf we see is like five color Death Shadow and sixteen yeah. plays AJ Kerrigan and Heat. And, and that's a throwback. Yeah, it really is. Like how the mighty have fallen. I, I think like when you look at the, again like even like Mardu Pyromancer, like things like so many decks can just ancillarily play like fatal push that it's just like it's it's made you know goif being just a solid creature by itself doesn't do enough anymore your two drop needs to get more value like a young pyromancer or, yep um and i think like even like looking like black red hollow one for example you know what i mean like which was second place here I, these decks are just they're doing you jund was with a catch-all before but these decks are just attacking on a lot of angles and we're, and we're not even seeing things like like affinity here at all or, or like um uh, like Dredge, which we saw a couple weeks ago. Like I, I think that you know it's so hard for Jun to be prepared for the meta game anymore. That this is where it is, and hate it. And that also means we're not seeing things like uh, Blood Red Elf. You know what I mean? Which is interesting. You know, so uh, I, I think that you know people freak out about like bannings and unbannings, but you know, the time and time again, with the exception of like Golgari Grave Troll, watsi has been kind of proved yeah. right about what they're doing with the format. So it's very true. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, standard. Uh, it'll it'll kind of be quick. There's not a whole lot of like you know truly stand out you know, sort of things. Um, it was won by Orlando Lucas playing Grixis midrange. You know we already talked about the power of Nicobolus really showing up, uh, defeating Mono Green Aggro, uh, played by uh, uh, Brad uh, Bonin. <laughs> I'm five. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I managed to just smile. You, you uh, for the full it's because you smile. That's what made me laugh. Um, and then uh, we have Mono Red Aggro, Grixis Midrange, Mono Red Aggro, Green Black Constrictor. Uh, okay, no, actually, there's some spice here. Uh, Mono Blue Outcome oh, yeah, in seventh place. So and then Red Black Midrange in eighth. So uh, this has been something that I have heard a little bit about. Uh, but this is a Paradoxal Outcome, Aetherflux Reservoir uh, deck that... Uh, it really, you know, uses the Psy, Master Thopterus, as kind of a, a little bit of an engine card um, to, to help it kind of power up its combo. Um, and this is sort of the the late stage uh, standard thing that you get to do. This is like, we, we have this huge sort of depth of cards and like things fade in and out of being remembered. And then it's like, oh yeah, we, we, have, the, we have the cannon. Use the cannon. <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting. Like this list is like shaving on like the cannon too. Like it, it just really wants to churn through its deck. Uh, I, I, so I know uh, the, like, a couple people are playing this. Uh, I, I won't. I, I won't say who specifically, as far as as I've seen it most prominently, because that person is still playing that that, that running around. But I, I, you know, I saw some hints of this after nationals. I've seen some updated lists with this. I think it's pretty interesting. It, it's all in on inspiring statuary. And if you look, for example. Um, this is a Mox Amber deck. Yeah. This is the only Mox Amber deck. And the way it gets away with running Mox Amber, now it has Psy, which helps a little bit. But honestly, Mox Amber is just a thing to hit with outcome, and then it becomes a mana rock when you have Inspiring uh, Statuary yeah. to play. So you're not even you're not even really trying that hard to turn it on. Yeah, legends. it's like, cool, I have a sweet bone saw. <laughs> like, like it's just another, yeah, it's just another ornithopter. Like, yeah. Not, well, not even, obviously. Like, bone saw is better, I suppose. Yeah. Dark Steel Relic. Yeah, <laughs> cool, Dark Steel Relic. <laughs> Yeah, Dark Steel uh, Relic is aesthetically better because it's indestructible. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, but I, I think, like, if you're not prepared for this at all, and there's a lot of decks in the format that aren't, I, I think that the deck is kind of scary because it, it turns to its deck quickly and you don't have a ton of time. One thing I will say, I, I've, give, I've been patting myself on the back for, you know, hey, like, you knew about these cards from the course. I poo-pooed Fountain of Renewal, and it's a 4 of here. Yeah! <laughs> Do it work, Fountain. I mean, I think, like, you just want... <laughs> it only would do work in this deck. Well, but... I mean, you, you all you want with this deck is more turns. Yeah. So, you know, against some of the decks in the format, if you play this on one, or if you have a draw that has two of them, like, you just want turns out of it. Yeah. And sometimes they become cards later, but they're just cheap artifacts. So I, I think that 
Um, it, it's almost like, you know, there's only one Inventor's Fair here, for example, but it plays that Inventor's Fair role as well, where it's just like, you know, if you gain, you know, in a deck like this, if you gain and it crosses first three or four turns, you know, two, three, four life, that's a, that's a spell. That's a, that's an attack step. So I, I think, like, if you're looking at it that way, I still think the card's probably pretty average, but you're playing average cards here on purpose. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and, and again, like, Sly, I think, really does pull this deck together. It's a sweet. I, I, I would like to play this deck, but I have no reason to get any of these cards. Oh, because... no, not at all. Not not at all. Um, but, and I think, like, the sideboard plan is interesting, too, where you have Karns, obviously, that can come in and become a legitimate threat. <laughs> Karns are real good in this yeah. deck. <laughs> I just like, oh, look, here's, here's a Tented. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, like, cool things like Time of Ice, which mm -hmm. is, I think, really sweet. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of this deck, and uh, I'm glad. It, I knew it was hanging around in the fridges. I'm glad to see it get, you know, if you're, I think it's kind real of, cool. if you're the kind of person who's trying to sneak into one of these last GPs before rotation, like, under the radar, I'm sorry that somebody outed you, I guess. But um, this is uh, this is sweet. This is a cool This is a cool deck. Yeah, you will catch a lot of people off guard with uh, this kind of strategy, so. I, I think one of the things that's going to get lost in the trans... Now, again, the the... We don't know what Ravnik's going to have, but this rotation is going to be sort of interesting because this is a, sort of a rare standard format where we had not just one, but multiple pure combo decks existing in the format. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen them a lot recently because of how powerful the cards have been, but, like, you know, this is obviously one of them. We also had the uh, New Perspectives deck that was running around for a long time, the yeah. Cycling Combo deck. Like, this format, specifically with Kaladesh, offered a number of full-on, you know, uh, combo decks and that that really is not um something you see in standard that often and probably once we have rotation you won't see for a little bit depending on what they print in uh, in ravnica so something to think about also when i say combo decks like that it makes me think of tombo debt and now i want to leave the light on for you <laughs> um so the uh last classic to kind of take a look at is going to be the star city games uh legacy classic uh, it was won by Sultai Depth. So this is uh, uh, played by uh, Thomas Happ. Uh, this is sort of similar to uh, Green Black uh, Depths, only where uh, we've got a little bit of a blue splash uh, for things like uh, Brainstorm and Stifle. And then some sideboard Fluster Storms, it looks like. Um, but, you know, th this gives you a little bit of filtering, a little bit of dr card draw, and uh, a little... Uh, uh, this, the teensy spit of, uh, of interaction, so... Um, defeating Blue White Helm. I haven't seen this deck in a long Jeffrey White. Time. Yeah, so this is the Helm of Obedience. Um, rest in peace. Uh, rest in peace combo. So Helm of Obedience is a is an old artifact. Uh, it says so. Pay X. Put the top card of target opponent's library into her graveyard. Uh, continue.